Hey everybody, welcome to episode 11 of Be Realize This Live. Thomas, Bryant, how are you, my friend? I'm happy to be here. What a crazy week it was last week. Yes. <laughs> and even crazier speak with products going GA all over the place. I mean, yesterday was a, a huge day for us in the Be Realize here. And, and that's kind of what we're doing today, right? We're going to do a quick recap of all the V realized news from around the VM world. Yeah, and there's a lot of it covered. So I think we've got a couple experts to join us today. We certainly do. Yes. So let's jump into the agenda really quick for uh, what we're covering. Actually, first of all, we had um, to week joints or technical editions of each of these uh, products with VM World Skyline. Um, Tuesday, we realize network insight. Wednesday, we realize log insight. Thursday, we operations what's new. And if that's not enough for you, we Friday too. Out of coming up, so we can go seriously and be going over the highlight reel, everything that, that we announced uh, at the world. And the next week, we're going to uh, um, you know our usual uh, demonstrations of all the new. Key so let's introduce all our guests today and bring them in here. Here we go, Mr. Peter Hayson. Howdy. Doing well yourself? Appreciate the input. Absolutely. Always need more power. Right. <laughs> and then joining us all for many good afternoon, I guess. Hi. Good morning. Good afternoon for me. Good morning for you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us. Uh David Pham here to talk about be realized log insight. David, all the way out in California. How you doing? Good morning, sir? good afternoon, good evening. What's going on, everybody? Hey, and last and certainly not least, Mr. Sejong Ha, how are you, man? You're also out in California? Uh, yes, definitely. Hi, Matt. Hi, everyone. Where it's currently oh, it's, colder than Minnesota, I hear. Yeah, I think it's in the 40s. <laughs> oh, wow. But at least it's sunny, what is so it's not gray. <laughs> it's a sunny cold. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is 54 here in New Hampshire. What is it there in Minnesota, Peter? 57. Whoa. Okay. Wow. All right. Heat wave going on over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's jump right into the uh, first part of our work here, which is realize operations. And Mr. Kishon is you, my friend. Yes. We had so much fun at VMworld last week. Um, but for those of you who might not be familiar with Be Realized Operations, I just want to run through this very quick intro. Um, so really the, the mission of Be Realized Operations within kind of the VMware vision is to help you proactively manage your, your cloud infrastructure, ultimately support your business and mission critical workloads. Um, and, you know, so we start out with whatever cloud you may choose, whether it be private, public, uh, VMware Cloud and even the Edge. And vRealize Operations starts out, it collects those metrics, events, configuration data, and logs. Uh, it, uh, once that data has been collected, we, we look at our application topology and dependency mapping and feed that data into the AI ML engine and really uh, learn and enhance your environment based on your business and operational intent. Um, and then on top of that, we have our, our four pillars of vRealize Operations, which is, you know, continuous, optimi continuous performance optimization, uh, efficient capacity and co cost management. Um, we've got intelligent remediation, uh, integrated uh, configuration and compliance. Um, you know, and that's really, uh, we've taken the platform and we've made some really awesome enhancements to it with uh, with the new release of 8.6 and, and vRealize Operations Cloud. So let's just get right into that 
that next slide, Matt. Um, I told Matt yesterday, I, uh, I, I moved in and out about eight different slides because there was just so much that I wanted to cover uh, because I just think, you know, some of these things are, are so exciting. And, um, you know, under, we've got kind of four different sections here. And with the, uh, the control plane for VMware Cloud, we've got really exciting things, um, you know, with full support for VMware Cloud on AWS, Azure VMware Service, uh, GCVE, VMware Cloud on Dell. Um, we've got an enhanced uh, VROPS and VRA integration. We introduced support for vSAN Mesh. Uh, a lot happening with uh, vRealize True Visibility Suite pricing and packaging, and uh, and we also have vRealize Cloud Universal Standard uh, add-on for Horizon, which I think Thomas knows a thing or two about, right, Thomas? No, no, no not me. never. Yes, of course. Yeah, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and really, you know, expanding into public clouds, it's never been easier uh, to get started with those public clouds. We've got monitoring for um, all of our AWS services, uh, in, which include all the, the custom metrics. Um, we've got a, a cool vRealize operations and cloud health integration for multi-cloud cost government. And that's different than the uh, the cloud health management pack that we had before. Now you have a, a bi-directional sync with those two. Um, so, you know, data flowing both ways is always the best. Uh, for app awareness, we, we introduced that uh, the telegraph integration has come on-prem. So now if you're, if you're running VROPS on-prem, uh, what you can do is, is you have access to um, 200 plus input plugins that are already written for Telegraph. You can uh, write your own if you want to. Um, I've seen some, some pretty creative things out there that people do with uh, writing their own um, writing their own applications for that. Um, and then, you know, getting over to this last column here, I don't want to take too much of everybody's time uh, because I know we have a, a lot of great news, but uh, I believe, Matt, is there a new UI in v Realize Operations? I think there is, Peter. I've seen something about this. Yeah, new UI, so updating a lot of the, um, you know, many options and the, the navigation a whole lot easier within vRealize Operations 8.6. Um, yeah, really, really kind of a cool thing, Peter, I think. Yes, and the, you know, with the, the new UI, um, you know, both on-prem and vROPS Cloud, what they do, like, you know, like you said, they consolidate everything down. Um, we've got uh, a single menu on the left-hand side. Uh, some other things with that, we've consolidated the, the cloud and other accounts into a single view called integrations, where you can manage all of your, your vCenter, your VMware cloud, public cloud, and management packs accounts from one page, uh, which is really helpful. And then there's my personal favorite, uh, the the favorites tab, so you can uh, mm. really easily. I see what you did there. <laughs> all of those, um, you know, all those custom dashboards that everybody out there builds. Um, so just really, really exciting stuff in eight six. There's, um, you know, I tweeted about it yesterday. There's the the email templates, um, the the mm. costing features that uh, that are updated. Matt wrote a really great blog uh, that actually went out yesterday that I would encourage everybody to to go check out because it kind of goes you know more in depth technically with uh, with those new releases. Yeah, and we'll link all these blogs down below in the comments uh, after we publish this. Obviously, going out live right now, but uh, check out those uh, those links below. Uh, Peter, tell us about the true visibility pricing and packaging. I think. You know, kind of, yes, kind of that's that. very that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. So um, what we're doing is uh, we've we've moved around uh, some of the management packs in uh, VRealize True Visibility Suite. 
and with the next release of those management packs, which is, is coming soon, um, everybody that has vRealize operations will have entitlements to all of the compute and storage management packs. So, um, you know, we're talking uh, Cisco UCS, um, Lenovo Compute, Dell EMC, um, PowerEdge. Uh, on the storage side, we've got, uh, you know, I think five different Dell EMC storage offerings. We've got HP Nimble, uh, Pure, NetApp, and uh, everybody's going to be able to utilize those management packs to kind of have that deeper view into their, their underlying infrastructure, which, uh, you know, it's, it's really awesome. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. I could say that thrice. <laughs> right. <laughs> there it is. That, that was awesome. Thanks so much for, uh, for giving us that recap of your realized operations. Uh, again, check out next week. We're going to be doing five demonstrations of these sweet, sweet new features. But anything else you want to add before we move on to the next product? No, I, I really appreciate you having me and uh, looking forward to all of the other announcements. Yeah, no, absolutely. Really appreciate you jumping on here this morning to uh, give us an update. And we're going to have you hang out here for a little bit too, because uh, you awesome. know, maybe you get some some cool questions and thoughts to interject here. Uh, so we're going to just keep building and building and building as we go along in this show. Friends here, let's, uh, you know, let's, let's keep them on. I and love to build. Away, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Alita, welcome. Thanks for uh, jumping here and giving us an update on vRealize Automation 8.6. Now, this also released uh, yesterday, right? That's right. Um, thanks for having me really here. Um, but I think before we move on to, to 8.6, I just wanted to start with the refresher um, because, you know, maybe not all of our pros uh, automation. So, I wanted to, for, for our, our viewers, uh, vRealize Automation is this modern infrastructure automation platform, and it has five components. And as you can see on the slide, it's Cloud Assembly, Service Broker, Stream Orchestrator, and SolStack Config. And although, you know, at first they could be perceived as maybe separate products, separate offerings, we don't sell them individually. They, they all come together as core components and they're only available um, as part of Virialize Automation. And I want to just give a little bit of, um, of uh, details here. Cloud Embly, this is where all the magic happens. It is the cloud construct creation. Um, it is our provisioning uh, engine with infrastructure as code. Service broker, you know, like the, the name itself says, brokering, um, is basically the catalog. It is our self-service consumption layer, and it has centralized policy um, and governance. Codestream, um, this provides the pipelining capabilities. And then the other two, we have two extensibility components. The orchestrator um, that is used by many customers as the workflow automation platform um, that just simplifies and automates this complex uh, data center infrastructure processes. And SaltStack config uh, basically that allows us to build salt modules to integrate with different elements uh, of the customer data center infrastructure, but also um, brings natively this software configuration management capability that, that we've always uh, delivered by partnering with, with other vendors. So now that we've got that uh, out of the way, I we'll want to uh, spend uh, maybe 30 seconds on this slide, showcases our use cases, and you know, basically just answers the question, what is the need for infrastructure automation, right? Who, who needs it? Um, and the answer is, you know, networking automation and network automation, basically accelerating the application rollout with networking and security. We have self-service cloud, uh, and this is automating vSphere-based workloads either on VMware Cloud Foundation environments or on VMware Cloud environments. 
Um, we have DevOps for infrastructure, and this is just our end-to-end -end automation of the application development lifecycle with the release pipeline across this multi-cloud environment. We have Kubernetes for automation, and this is just automating uh, the Kubernetes clusters. And last but not least, security operations, which is the event-driven automation with compliance uh, enforcement and vulnerability remediation. Now I'm ready to go to the most exciting part. And, and this is what we've announced uh, at VMworld, um, since it is a recap uh, episode. We have a number of features, as you can see them here. Um, I want to focus on uh, the four most important. Um, under the, the modern pillar, uh, we have workspace support for code stream to support Kubernetes. And um, basically, this, this is a feature that uh, states that in, in workspace, you can now use Kubernetes to back end custom integration tasks. And why is important? Well, it's because you don't need to have the Docker host anymore. So mm -hmm. now our customers will be able to use any compliant Kubernetes So it just completely removes uh, the dependency on Docker and it offers a choice to use Kubernetes instead. Um, and why is important for Virialize Automation that we've released this is because, um, you know, now we can use things like KS Kubernetes service to backend this code stream uh, CI tasks. It's just allowing us to be more public cloud focused code stream. And uh, now let's see, I think the next one I would like to cover. Are under the integrate uh, pillar. And the first one to discuss is the native stack configuration automation via modules for VMC, NSX and vSphere. Um, you know, our team has been uh, actively uh, developing salt modules for, for vSphere, NSX, and VMC. And this content will be made available under the salt project. Um, and it's, you know, being open source for community consumption and contribution. And it's important to note that these are initial offers, um, you know, to provide functionality that gives us uh, some competitive advantages um with existing capabilities and technologies and we will create content and um, that will enable us uh, to access different modules basically different capabilities within vSphere NSX and VMC that we are trying to build out and it will enable our customers to install this this full infrastructure um you know like the ability to install a vCenter an ESX host or bare metal um, and execute through SolStack. Okay, let's see. The next one that I have highlighted here um, is support for custom resources with ABX actions. And um, here we have uh, application ar architects that can use extensibility actions in cloud templates to build complex applications. And they can create custom resources based on ex extensibility actions and assets, um, lifecycle operation, and they too context of actions. Um, the extensibility action script can return text that can be directly populated as a custom component on the design canvas. And, you know, when you look at it, you're thinking, okay, well, how, how before? And before this um, feature was offered, in order to create a custom resource uh, application architects needed to have advanced VRO background knowledge, right? And in some cases, it, it required some heavy lifting um, for VRO dynamic processes, and it used to be more time consuming. And last but not least, uh, we have management of VCD-based um, MSP clouds in VRA. And this is, uh, I'm very excited about this feature, uh, is, you know, the definition of, of better together um, between the two organizations, between the VCD group and, and VRA. 
And this was um, built uh, with our enterprise customers in mind. Um, enterprises who own VRA and our applications in VCD clouds, uh, they can now manage infrastructure in their VCD provider cloud. So now with this integration, our customers, you know, can take of VRAs, templating, um, the catalog, the governance, uh, pipelining, extensibility, you name it, um, and also multi-cloud management capabilities. So when you couple that with VCD's multi-tenant capabilities that are available to uh, MSP customers, this is nothing but uh, a win-win. And that's a wrap for me on uh, what's new with uh, VRA 8.6. You mean that's it? That's that's all that's we're bringing? It. That's, that's, that's the most important one. But, you know, I, I, if this was uh, going live for the next two hours, I think I could uh, I could take a lot more time. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, thank you for that uh, that recap. Yeah, a lot of uh, great things coming here. And again, check us out uh, next week. We'll be giving you a demonstration uh, next Friday of all these awesome yeah. features. So, uh, Alita, thanks so much for... Uh, for joining us today we'll uh, we'll keep you in here and we're going to bring in mr sejong ha to talk about we realize network insight hello Sejong, welcome. hi yeah thanks so we'll go ahead and cover some of the latest in this release it was actually v realize network insight 6.4 and that's for the on-premises and we also have a cloud SaaS version uh and we just GA'd actually. So general availability just occurred yesterday. So all the release notes, all the documentations, it's available now. So just a quick overview of vRealize Network Insight Cloud for people who don't um, use it today. Uh, it's a tool for network analysis and also visibility. So what's connected to what, who's talking to who, uh, you know, keeping track of IP addresses, hosts. And then it's also a tool used across the infrastructure in terms of it's not just the network admin who cares, you know, it's the cloud admin too, you know, and security people too, because, you know, sometimes there's always issues of troubleshooting where you're not sure where the problem is. So, you know, people are just pointing fingers. So, you know, the realized network insight could give, you know, read access to certain groups, you know, admin access to the network team, for example, and together they can sort of look at different things. And it's non-invasive, so that way, even if you give access to someone else, you know, they're, they're not making config changes on the infrastructure. It's a read-only tool. So that's a very easy to implement as well. So I'll go ahead and go to the uh, next slide where basically we'll cover some of the highlights. So there's a couple things, especially, you know, we're talking about applications. On the app side, you know, we have some ServiceNow app discovery enhancements. So a lot of the integrations with ServiceNow uh, go straight into the app discovery engine for vRealize Network Insight. So it's not just pulling information that vRealize Network Insight understands, but also from these integrations. And some of the things we've done is listen to our customers. So on before to deploy ServiceNow, you had to do the read-only admin um, login. And basically not all the customers wanted to give that to the vRealize Network Insight platform. So now we'll take any ServiceNow login privilege and we'll take that information in and we'll integrate that. But then we also show very visually, you know, if you have this lesser login privilege, what do you not get? What do you not see? But what do you see? So it's a lot easier and very user friendly. And some other things that improved with the ServiceNow integration that you know we've already had before was the ability to just pull certain information more frequently. You know, so maybe you know you don't want to wait for the larger batch update, which is less frequent from ServiceNow to VLS Network Insight, but you know, maybe there's something you want to keep more of a real-time um, pulse on, uh, that is capable too. Uh, in terms of streaming data bus, that's also very useful because you know, just you know, just in this world, integrations are so important. We can also so you can always pull APIs from the Realize Network Insight as needed, and that's more of a like a pull. And but we can also now push information too. So with the streaming data bus, we can push large amounts of data and 
fee realized network insight, of course, because it's listening to the entire infrastructure. There's tons of data and lots of IP addresses and details. Now we can start pushing that to wherever you want. So whether it's you know ServiceNow, you want to push it to PagerDuty, you want to push it to Slack, a anywhere. So this is you know I think very cool tool uh, and capability now. And then uh, of course we are integrated with VMware SD WAN, which was the former Velo Cloud acquisition. So we've added a lot of new dashboards, especially around applications that you can see as well. And then also something called Intent, and Intent is sort of where if something you know, you want the network to behave a certain way. If it's not, then alert you and um, when it's going against intent. So that's some capabilities there. And then of course, with assurance and verification, this was an acquisition we integrated last year called Veriflow. Uh, we're just adding to the support supported devices, but basically it helps build out, you know, the physical topology that we can see. So we've added some Cisco routers, as well as we added a um, the Nexus FEX extenders. I just have to add that to the slide later. Uh, as well as on the um, cloud networking side, we now support NSXT Federation. That was a feature that came out last year on the NSX side, but basically um, there's it structures the NSX topology in terms of global as well as local resources. So they just configure the global and it pushes it down to the local. But now we can actually see all that and we can see you know, different regions. For example, if you set up, let's say Paris or US, you, you could see that um, in the Realized Network Insight. So it doesn't just look like one big blob on the next Network Insight side. So if there's structure on the network NSX Federation, you can also view that now. And then also support for uh, the NSXT firewall on the security side. We have visibility of the virtual distributed switch. And then there's some other uh, enhancements in terms of our reach in terms of services. So uh, we had four different locations globally before, but now we've added Canada. So I know there's a lot of Canadians out there who would probably be happy, as well as Frankfurt. So before we used to have London, uh, you know, and now if, you know, people probably want less latency sending their data to our staff service. So we have Frankfurt on the mainland, as well as uh, we have something called vRealize Network Insight Toolkit. So this is also new too. So this is where you run this on a separate application. You know, you can run on a VM outside of vRealize Network Insight. But basically, rather than running scripts that you would use with vRealize Network Insight or flings on CLI, you can actually do it with a GUI. So we have you know, a repository out there. You can just um, pull those scripts and just interact it with a GUI, especially for people who don't want to work with command line. So these are just the highlights. And of course, there's more features. And those are the release notes that have been available since yesterday. That's really so, cool. I was watching the, the data bus. seems interesting. I was watching Martin Smith publish a, like a, a you know, demonstration of it. Out on YouTube again. We'll link it below for you. Um, but you know that that seems pretty powerful as far as pushing all that data from your realized network insight into kind of any number of sources, right? Right. Um, so if you're looking for like firewall changes, things like that, um, seems like a lot of possibilities there for that. That that data bus thing seems pretty cool. Right. You can definitely get creative because I mean, whatever you want. I mean, you can set it on an alert. When an alert happens, then send this information. You know, yeah. so there's a lot of flexibility in how that functionality works. Yeah. Say, so, Jung, I want to know how I get that intense feature uh, installed in my children. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know th that that's th that I guess sometimes they're acting like I don't want them to. <laughs> right, but you know, I guess you have to just realize. Like, I have, I have a junior now in high school. They're not going to be like you or or your, you know, but I'm your partner. So cool. Yeah, I know, but they're just going to be their own people. I, I, I just think I, I realized that after they're like teenagers, you know, they're just not going to listen to you and be their own people. So you have this intent of how behavior should be, but you know, they're just going to do their own thing. You just kind of get the alert, though. So you're saying the only way that I can utilize intents is in Bernie, not in people. 
Yeah, I think so. I, I, unless you're just going to be unhappy the rest of your life, you know? <laughs> oh. You just have to let it go. It's okay, Peter. It's okay. After 25, you know, they'll, they'll come back. Yeah. They'll come back. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, well, thanks, St. Young. And, uh, you know, Good, good overview of you realize Network Insight and Peter's children here. Um, looks like you have a couple of resources too for people to check out. Yes, definitely. And then there's a couple of blogs. So if you put the blogs in the show notes, that'll be great. And uh, you know, if you want to take a picture of this, so you can sort of manually type that in. Next time, I'll have to do some QR codes. Yeah, nice idea. It's a good one. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Sejong. Let's bring in Mr. David Pham here to complete our picture of <laughs> everything. Be right. real lives. Hey, what's happening? All right, that's that's a lot of pressure there. With uh, what is it? Uh, five awesome speakers before me. Thanks for the setup. I gotta try to keep up with everybody here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, like, let's get started here. If, um, if you guys are not familiarized, uh, the Log Insight Cloud. It comes in two form factors: uh, on-prem and as a service. Uh, recently, uh, yesterday actually, we just uh, on October twelfth, we just released Log Insight eight point six. But we also have monthly cadences uh, for VRISE uh, Log Insight Cloud. But um, what this is, is, this is a centralized log management tool that's going to deliver all the operational visibility and intelligent analytics across your entire VMware Software Defined Data Center, your VMware Cloud, and across all the major, pub, uh, major public clouds, such as AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. So what it does is actually it gives you the accelerated IT troubleshooting so you get better security across both your uh, private, hybrid, and public clouds. Um, one of the things, if, if you're adopting a VMware Cloud on AWS, uh, any subscription uh, provides you uh, a copy of the uh, Insight Cloud. Um, and this is going to give you uh, features that it's going to be focused on auditing, uh, diagnostic capabilities, and also the ability to upgrade to the full product with the integration with the subscription manager. So you can try it out, get the freemiums. If you like it, uh, you know, with the subscription manager, within minutes, you can move into the full blown um, version. It's going to give you more uh, features to meet your business use cases, data retentions. Uh, to meet compliance requirements, uh, you get actionable dashboards, you get all the third party extensibilities, and also you get the pricing flexibilities to ingest, store, and query at the lowest uh, price points. So uh, let's go into the next slide. So um, uh, the first, uh, the next two slides is going to be uh, v uh, VRA's Log Insight Cloud exclusives. So they're betas, uh, we just announced it, but um, you know, one of the key things is that the log root cause analysis. So it's finding the potential root cause from millions of log messages. Why? Because data is exploding. And in today's time, uh, you have to manage data at the edge uh, in any modern uh, business applications. Uh, today's applications, they're increasingly complex. Uh, they have really highly dynamic environments where you have more and uh, more dependencies uh, than a single team or even a small uh, a single person or a small team can effectively analyze and manage with your traditional monitoring tools. But the idea is with the root cause analysis, which is powered by AI ops, is, is able to detect and surface all the relevant logs in the form of clusters and reduces all the logs with the uh, algorithms that show only the significant logs as the potential root causes. So if you kind of look at this chart here, um, what it is is, you know, well, you're going to start out with possibly millions of log messages. And as I mentioned, through the root cause analysis, um, you know, machine learning, data management, uh, data pattern matching, we do log clusters to look for relevant and averages of your uh, uh, logs. We look at the text relevance and look at the different anomalies. And also we incorporate all the feedback loop that's going to really minimize all the logs into, you know, tens or hundreds. That's really going to give you the action on the root cause there. So that's one of the key things where the RCA is really going to help and minimize root uh, mean time to resolution. And uh, going to the next one here, uh, another beta announcement that we have for uh, exclusively for um, uh, Log Insight Cloud is the log partitions. So, um, you know, one of the key things is that storing, indexing, and managing uh, other different types of log data in traditional log management tools are very expensive. Uh, cloud scale applications, cloud native applications can generate millions of logs um, in, in events per minute. And also one of the key things is different types of, um, you know, uh, logs and data fall under different compliance regulations. So there's a lot of different compliance of how you manage, store uh, your logs. And when we're talking about this cloud scale, I mean, it's just impossible uh, to manage all the logs and get everything in a unified view. 
But with the log partitions, you do get this flexible option to filter and process logs based on your specific requirements. Uh, so if you have data that requires long-term retentions, but is infrequently, asset, infrequently accessed, that was a tongue twister. So uh, log partitions really uh, provides you the cost savings by placing all these logs in a non-indexed uh, partition at a lower cost. So the, the advantages of this is that um, you can, you can change the processing order of your partitions for compliance requirements, you do get that capability and functionality. Uh, if you think about HIPAA, um, you know, um, uh, uh, e-commerce, or even government, there's a lot of information and uh, logs that you have to store and the most restrictive and most secure uh, partitions. And one of the key things is also, um, you know, with the infrequent data, you can also move these logs from these non-indexed, uh, you know, partitions to more of your high-performing index uh, partitions if required. So the ability to have flexibility and peering across your uh, infrequent non-index uh, log partitions. And uh, the next one here, this is um, uh, new to uh, Login Site 8.6. This is an on-prem exclusive. So we have now full integration with the NSX Identity Firewall. So the Identity Firewall, uh, this is a feature that allows the NSX administrators to create uh, Active Directory user-based uh, distributed firewall rules. So viewers Login Site extracts these fields uh, from the VPN logs and passes information uh, to the NSX for user to IP mapping. Uh, this uh, enablement uh, integration allows NSX to support providers such as Global uh, Protect, uh, ClearPass, and also any other custom providers as well. So you can see um, on the screenshot here, um, you have the support to, um, you know, uh, for multiple, multiple uh, custom providers for this firewall integration. But um, as I said, this, uh, you know, the login site here, it really enables administrators to connect uh, uh, anything to anything in the environment from operating systems, uh, to applications, to storage devices, to firewalls, um, to network devices, to IoT sensors, for this whole uh, enterprise-wide visibility uh, via log analytics. And you get this holistic view, so it enables the IT teams to reach resolutions quickly anytime when you have issues that arise uh, through the predefined alerts, um, out-of-the-box dashboarding, uh, customized dashboarding, and also you get these intelligent curing to make onboarding straightforward with uh, insights uh, and flows um, for your applications infrastructure, in the infrastructure. All right, and going into the uh, the last announcement here is Viewerize AI Cloud. So um, with Viewerize AI Cloud, this is a secure SaaS service that we use reinforcement learning to continuously learn, adapt, and optimize infrastructure KPIs uh, in order to deliver consistent and optimal performance for your application workloads. So, so if you think about you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, reinforcement learning is a subset of uh, machine learning. And what it does, it, it uses uh, algorithms that looks for the, the largest reward mechanism. So um, you know, if you think about your uh, GPS system, Waze, for example, uh, you put in destination, what it does is that you know, if you go to work every day, you might have a different uh, route each day of the week because it looks at you know real-time data, uh, data collection, other uh, users on the uh, commute. And what this is, is for our first use case here for Viewers AI Cloud is that we do data collections um, to support uh, performance, uh, performance optimization for vSAN. So what it does is it does data collections from your vSAN clusters. It sends it up to the uh, SaaS data lake where we apply the reinforcement learning. So it, it looks at all your applications. It looks at the available resources. And also looks at all the tunables, uh, KPIs for um, network uh, throughput, uh, network latency, read and write throughput for uh, your, your cache. So it uh, optimizes and looks at all these different tunables and it makes all these different combinations. One of the key things is that if you think about um, you know, uh, the data center, you might have you know, a team of uh, 10 IT administrators looking at all the different combinations. But one of the key challenges, if you make a change in one cluster or one data center, it might have a negative effect on another one. So uh, with the reinforcement learning with AA Cloud, it's able to understand, so uh, it has guardrails in place. If I'm gonna make a change or a tunable uh, in your environment, I wanna make sure that it has no negative effects, uh, no uh, performance degradation across any other workload or cluster before it does that. So it does this through this digital twin. So it makes all these changes um, through this digital twin. If everything's all nice, great, uh, and in the green with no negative effects, then it's gonna go down and make these changes on your vSAN clusters. 
So, uh, you know, uh, three takeaways. Number one, as I mentioned, data collection. It collects, stores, and analyzes the metrics in the SaaS data lakes. Uh, number two, it does the continuous monitoring. It learns your resource utilizations, the uh, daily demands uh, by the hour, by the minute, uh, by the second, and it, understand, it creates these patterns with rapid sampling of these metrics. And the last thing is it does these automated actions, right? So it dynamically adjusts the infrastructure tunables to the changing needs of your applications and workloads. And it does this continuous, continuously collects uh, monitors and automated actions for that. So, um, you know, that came out last year and uh, for VMworld 2021 last week, we made the announcements. So we are doing more with uh, So our second use case, the sec I would say second and third use cases, uh, we are coming out with a beta for the storage policy genie. So what this is, is this is a recommendations engine uh, that under same thing that does data collections, understands your environment. So it makes recommendations to your cluster uh, and uh, virtual machine default policies. So what it is, it looks like uh, different costing in terms of cost, uh, performance, uh, capacity. Uh, it looks at your uh, striping, your rate configurations. It also makes recommendations of whether you should enable or disable uh, data compression or deduplication. So the, one of the key things with um, the, the last slide I showed you, it's all automated. It does it dynamically with the storage policy genie. It's just a recommendations engine. So it's gonna tell you um, how to do it, um, give you all the benefits, but that's something that you do yourself uh, as it requires uh, user intervention. And the second part of the announcement is the uh, support for the uh, Realize Automation Cloud for the smart deployments. Uh, first one is the smart initial deployment. So if you think about um, you know uh, placement, um, a lot of times you're just kind of looking at you know, all your different clusters, data, uh, data centers, to kind of assuming that, hey, I have resources available here, but um, one of the things that this uses more of the machine learning to really give you the smart initial deployment that looks for all the performance demands of all your other workloads and clusters. It places them at the best and most optimal uh, cluster and data center. And also uh, the smart initial sizing. Um, if you think about uh, you know, uh, what VRS operations and VRS operation cloud does today, it does uh, right sizing, but that's more of a day two operations. You have to deploy your applications workloads first, and then after it uh, understands the workload requirements and makes recommendations with automatically um, or um, suggestions to selling the, hey, you can save some resources by right sizing this. But then um, if you think about uh, smart initial sizing, this is a day uh, zero um, uh, feature. So right before you deploy it, uh, it looks at other applications that are uh, using the same templates, um, the same types of applications, uh, learn, understands and learns the averages, and it also does the uh, you know the right sizing for that right out of the box. So then um, you can reduce the cost. You don't have to say waste time afterwards to go back and realize if you're uh, resource starved or you're over provisioned for your workloads. And the last one uh, that we're uh, announcing for the tech preview is the uh, virtual distributed switch network optimization, which is powered by the realized network insight. So with this, just like the uh, first use case for vSAN, this is uses, uh, understands, collects information and uh, um, optimizes a lot of the KPIs for networking. Um, and primarily we're supporting the virtual distributed switch today. And what it does is it looks for reduced latencies and increased throughput. And also one of the key things is it reduces the retransmits for packets and also packet drops. Um, again, that's uh, now we uh, look out for more. We're going to do a lot more viewers IA cloud um, you know, features in the coming future. But um, uh, that's it for me on this side. Thanks. So yeah, kind of kind of cool seeing what we're doing for um, you know those network tunables there. So kind of same thing we're doing with vSAN, get feedback from in this case realized Network Insight and then tuning the network. Or what yeah. So if you think about all the bottlenecks and um, you know uh, packet drops. This understands that, so maybe it kind of helps you configure, uh, understand all the optimal uh, VDS configurations. It might move some of your workload network flows to different uh, distributed switches. Um, again, it just purely network optimization to really reduce that network latency and packet drops. Uh, Many two use cases for that. That's that's very cool. A lot of, a lot of applications for uh, vRealize AI. Happy to see that you know branching yeah. out into a lot of different areas. That's, that's really yeah. Cool. So the idea so, is AI can, awesome. can, can optimize every other VMware SDDC feature there. So uh, <laughs> hopefully that's yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. I think that's just about a wrap on, you know, again, recap of everything around the VMworld uh, announcements here for vRealize. Uh, 
covering log insight, operations, org insight, automation, and bonus we realize AI announcements here. So thanks everybody for uh, for jumping in and thanks to all our like awesome guests here. This is the first time we've had a packed room like this on Vrealize this live. So couldn't uh, couldn't ask for better friends to share with today. So really appreciate y'all jumping in. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thanks. It's great having us. Thanks. This guy is yeah. cool. I finally got to do the Brady Bunch pointing.